What's up, Cal Gang? Welcome back to some dynamics. So let's solve this problem. So what we have is a force, which varies with position. It's acting on the block. Um, and at s is equal to zero, so initially we have a velocity of six meters a second. We also have a coefficient of kinetic friction. So as you can see in this image here, the force is pushing on the block in the same direction it's going. So we're trying to find how far the block slides before it reaches 15 meters a second. So right, as we push the block more, that force is going to increase more and more. So that's just how this is going to go. So we're using work energy here. This is saying that initial energy plus the changes in energy, which is going to be friction and the force, is going to equal our final energy. So let's expand this. So we have an initial energy in kinetic energy, and we can label that one half mass velocity one squared. So this is our initial kinetic energy. Then what energy is going to go in and out of the system? Well, obviously we're applying a force to the system, so we can go ahead and put in uh, the force energy. So what is the energy? How is it related to force? Well, the equation is the integral from the position one to position two of force times change in position, right? ds. Okay, then what else do we have? Well, we have another force, and that's the force of friction. And the force of friction is taking energy out of the system, so we're going to subtract it. So this is going to be the same integral, S1 to S2, of force of friction, ds. And then we're going to set all of this to our final kinetic energy. And so mass velocity 2 is what we're solving for, right? We want that after velocity. Actually, no, we know what our final velocity is. We're solving for position. So now, what can we do to this? Well, let's plug in our forces. Let's plug in what we know. So the kinetic energy is going to stay the same, one half mass velocity one squared. Then what are our bounds going to become? So this has become position one to position two. So we're solving for position. So whatever we're doing, our bounds are going to be what we're solving for. So we're going to set our bounds to be position. Basically, initial position is zero. And our final position is going to be s. So we don't know what this s is yet. And that's what we're solving for, so we can label it s. Now the force we know is 50 square root of s, so we can do 50, uh, let's label this S final maybe, just to not get it confused with the other S. So this is going to be 50 square root of S ds. So now we have an integral here we're going to have to solve. So then see with the friction, our bounds are going to be the same, 0 to S final. And then force of friction, well that's normal coefficient of friction. And normal is mass times gravity. So force of friction can get replaced with mass, gravity, coefficient of kinetic friction ds. Now all this is equal to one half mass velocity two squared. So now let's go ahead and solve these integrals. So this kinetic energy is going to stay one half mass velocity one squared plus now this integral the fifty can get factored out. Then the integral of square root of s is going to be two thirds s to the three halves. Now this is on the bounds of zero to s final. Make sure I did that right. Yep. Okay, so then we have this integral here. So the only thing in here is no s. So what happens is we're going to put in an s. This becomes s final. So we can really simply do this integral is minus mass, gravity, kinetic, coefficient of kinetic friction. Uh, I did not draw that well at all. Okay. And then s final. And then this is equal to 1 half mass velocity 2 squared. So also, really quickly, it's pretty easy to tell, but this is just going to become S final, so I don't even have to do that last step. Okay, so now we can see we're kind of lining up for a weird equation. We have S to the 3 halves in S, and then a, like a variable that's just known. So we're going to need to do some weird solving techniques for this, but let's first move everything to one side. So I'm going to first move these, this 1 half mass velocity squared to the other side, and we're going to end up with 1 half mass velocity 1 squared minus velocity 2 squared. And then this is going to be plus, all right, so 50 times 2 is 100 over 3. This is going to be s to the 3 halves. And then this is going to be minus mass, gravity, coefficient of kinetic friction, s final. And this is all equal to 0. So finally, let's just plug in our numbers. Um, I did not do it all very well. But this is going to become negative 1,890. So right, we're plugging in mass is uh, 20 kilograms. Velocity initial is 6. And velocity final is 15. So those are the numbers I plugged in here. And this is going to stay the same 100 
over 3, s to the 3 halves. And this, the mass again, is uh, 20. Gravity is 9.81. Coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.3. Do this, you get uh, 58.86s is equal to 0. Okay, so now we have this really weird equation, and it's not quite the quadratic equation. Uh, so there's really no good way to solve this, except what I like to do is I have a graphing calculator, and I'll plug it into the graphing calculator, and then wherever it's equal to zero, that's the position where it crosses the x-axis. And that's how we know that we found that point, so that solves this equation. So if you do that, you're going to find that s is equal to 20.5 meters. And that's the point where its velocity reaches 15 meters a second. So there we go, we solved the problem. Uh, so basically all this is not too tricky, uh, just this at the end is a little weird. So yeah, thanks for watching, thanks for your support. If you're still struggling, check out my playlist, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.